oyster catcher leaves, you can hardly see the nest at all. It just blends in with the sand and grass and rocks all around. It's like it disappears. Now that is cool. Hey, what's that weird thing? I think it's some kind of bird's nest. It is, and it's on a box that people made. You can see it from a mile away. What kind of bird would want a nest like that? And why? Wow, that's a big bird with really, really long wings. I wonder what it is. I think we can figure it out. Bird watchers identify birds by looking at the shape of their wings as they fly. Its wings make a kind of M shape. It's an osprey. It's a kind of hawk. Whoa! Wow! That fishy! Hey, it's going to that strange nest. Let's get closer. Come on. Why would ospreys nest in a place like this? Good question. Let's find out. Ospreys eat almost only live fish. So they must need to be near water. They like to nest in high places free from predators like raccoons. No raccoon is going to get all the way up there. The nest can be in a tall tree, but they'll use whatever they find. So people build these platforms for ospreys to come and use. And they like open areas so they can get to the nest easily. Maybe because their wings are so large, they need a lot of space. Ospreys use the same nest year after year. They keep adding to it so their nests can get big enough to fit a person. Now that is amazing. Baby ospreys? Let's see. Yep. Baby ospreys! We saw such amazing birds in their nests. One that likes to nest up high, the osprey. And one that likes to nest down low, the oyster catcher. I guess they both found the best place for their nests. Now if I could only find my sketch pad. I wish I could find my binoculars. Wawa bottle. Wait a minute, Nash. I saw your water bottle in the lost and found. And I saw your sketch pad. <gasps> Nash and I saw your binoculars. Yep. They're all in the lost and found? The lost and found. In here. It's right here. We've been using different bins for the lost and found? Okay, I've got an idea. From now on, this is the Polo's official lost and found. Uh-huh. The best place. <laughs> Fishies, not froggies. When these tadpoles get older, they're going to become froggies. Some animals like frogs have bodies that change from one form to another as they grow. That's called metamorphosis. Mother frogs lay eggs. When the eggs hatch, tadpoles come out. Tadpoles are baby frogs. Hmm. The tadpoles have long tails and live and breathe underwater, just like fish do. Uh-huh, fishies. Yeah, but watch this. As the tadpoles get older, their bodies change. Legs. Right. First, they grow their back legs and then their front legs. And they don't have to stay underwater all the time. They can come out on land. As they change, their tails get shorter and shorter until they look like that. Frogs are so cool. Yeah. Hmm. Frogs change form as they grow, 
But you won't. You'll stay the same as you grow. Just like these animals. You'll just get bigger. No wings. No wings. But a much bigger you. Eh, uh, just Nash? Yeah, always Nash, but bigger. Okay. <laughs> Like it. It would be nice to turn into a lion. Or to grow a tail. Or wings. Now that is cool. But Nash is going to stay Nash. And that's great. He's just going to get bigger. Yeah. Big Nash. See? Whoa. Whoa. It's a really big Nash. <laughs> <laughs> Great work, Polos. There's just one last thing left to do. Lift off! Whoa! Wait, we're lifting off already? Not yet. We're training to lift off. I'm flying us in a test loop to show us what it feels like to lift off. Whoa! 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 When we zoom up really fast, this is what we'll feel. High G-forces. This means we'll feel heavier. Uh. Oh, wow. 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 And when we get to space, this is what we'll feel. Low G-forces. We'll feel lighter, like we're weightless. Yeah. Won't that be fun, Willow? Oh, I won't be floating, Marco. This pilot's got to stay focused. Is everyone feeling OK? I'm good. Yay. Affirmative. Great! Then we're ready to be Astro Polos. Audrey, change to Polo Galactic and begin countdown, please. Polo Galactic launch in five, four, three, two, one, lift off. I can't feel my face! Liftoff complete. Welcome to space, Polos. You may now unbuckle your seatbelts and begin floating around in the cabin. Hey! <laughs> Whee! <laughs> this is so yeah. oh. Willow, you've got to try this. Weightlessness is the best. I'm sure it is, but someone has to pilot the ship. Set it on autopilot. That's just for emergencies. It doesn't have to be. But I always fly the ship. Okay, if you're sure. Oh, oh, this is awesome! Yeah. Yeah. Look at me! Yeah. Yeah. Look at me! I'm floating! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Being weightless looks like fun. Woo! Woo! <laughs> ah. Whoa! Hmm. Oh! Maybe I could use the autopilot just for a few seconds. Audrey? Autopilot for me, please. Autopilot activated. <gasps> wow! Hello. <laughs> I'm sure glad you could make it. Me too. On Earth, gravity keeps our feet on the ground, but in space, being weightless rocks. Yeah! yeah! Nice box. For me? Aw, thanks. <gasps> oh! Ah! E! Wow, what's that? It's a hermit crab, Lily. Wherever you find hermit crabs, you usually find shells around it, too. I hope so. Thanks, Chester. <laughs> nice. <gasps> More. Bye-bye. Bye, Nash. These ones are pretty. <gasps> My shells? Wh where did they go? Mm -hmm. Huh? Nope. <laughs> Polos, have any of you seen my seashells? They're gone. Gone? No way! We'll help you search for them. Where's Nash? 
Uh... <laughs> ah! <gasps> right there. Oh, sorry. It's okay, Nash. We'll rebuild it later. We have shells to find. <gasps> Lily, I think we solved the mystery. Really? A hermit crab. Lots of hermit crabs and shells. Yes, we found them. But why did they take them? Hermit crabs don't grow their own shells. They live inside ones that other creatures leave behind. Like hand-me-down clothes? Wow! What happens when one grows too big for its shell? It leaves it behind and looks for a bigger shell until it finds one that makes it a perfect fit. Interesting! Whoa, that's neat! <laughs> it's like we did trying on different sun hats. I love collecting seashells, but these hermit crabs need them more than I do. Enjoy, little crabbies. Need any help building your sand castle? Aw, that's nice, Lily. Definitely. Of course. <gasps> At least it has antler holes now. <laughs> Makes it a perfect fit. <laughs> oh, Chester. <laughs> I think somebody else has found a perfect fit, too. Right, Hermit Crab? <laughs> I wonder how many satellites are in orbit. There are thousands. Whoa! What? Whoa! Ah! The satellite we're visiting and many others like it are machines that have been launched into orbit. They send and receive signals to and from the Earth so that we can communicate with each other. Wow! So Corby and Lily's call had to go all the way up here before the signal got sent to us? Not just their call, everybody's calls. And videos. Look, weather reports. La 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 <laughs> la la la. And music. So without satellites, we can't call our friends, watch shows, or even know if it's gonna rain? Wow. Let's see if we can see what's wrong with this satellite. Hold on! Whoa, wow! There's the problem! Oh, the antenna is bent! It can't send and receive signals from Earth if it's damaged! Well, I guess I better go straighten things out. Wait, you mean the antenna, right? You're going to go straighten out the antenna! <sighs> That's right, Chester, the antenna! Oh, good. Just wanted to make sure. Ugh. Whoa, whoa! Yes, I made it! Great, Marco. Now go over to the bent piece. Whoa! Whoa! <gasps> View! Okay, now straighten it, then tighten the bolt so it stays put. <gasps> it's stuck! <gasps> It's gonna eat it. Ew. Ew! Uh, let's look it up. 
It's a dung beetle. Dung? What's that? Dung is another word for poop. And yes, it's going to eat it. Yuck! Why? It says here that whenever an animal eats something, not all of it gets digested. Some tiny undigested bits end up in its dung. And that's what dung beetles eat? Yes. They also get water from the dung. Okay. This time I'm going to say it. Yuck. Where's it going? Yeah. If they're going to eat dung, why not eat it right here? Yeah, there's plenty. They bury it so they can eat it later? And they lay their eggs in the dung balls. It looks like it's working really hard. That ball is huge in comparison to the beetle. Dung beetles are the strongest insect. It can move a ball over a thousand times its weight. That's like you pulling a school bus, Nash. Wow. But that's not all. Dung beetles help the environment of the savannah by burying and eating tons of dung produced by other animals. You mean they help to keep this place clean? Yes. Plus, flies lay eggs and dung. So by eating and burying so much of it, the dung beetles stop the fly eggs from hatching. So, fewer flies. That's amazing. Actually, dung beetles are amazing. Dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle. They've got a dirty job that someone's gotta do. They're small but mighty and they're tidy too. We're lucky there's a bug that's willing to lug around so much poop. They go to work every single day with a tumbling dance that looks like play. But if you had to do a job with poop, would you? 